Hello and welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called this, you may ask? So I'll tell you. The exception meaning of angels messenger and the exception meaning of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And also I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, David Breaker. But before that, I would like to say thank you so much for watching the show live or at a later date, as it means a lot to me to connect with like-minded women. Now, if you've never met before, then my name is Ray and I help women to crossroads in their life, heal their past, create their future and transform their present so they can take control of their destiny in the here and now. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and I use future life progression, past life regression, angelic Reiki, meditation, angel cards, oracle cards and hypnosis to help women who feel lost get clear on their reason for being here. And I've also created a transformational journey to help you take charge of your destiny. Now, each episode of the show will cover various themes of your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests, like today's guest, David Breaker, who will be sharing with us his journey and the impact it's had on his life. He will also walk us through the critical steps that helped him break through to the life he now leads. And finally, he will be giving us some tips and easy to follow starting tips to kickstart the lifestyle change to achieve the life you deserve. Now, David went through a huge shift in his life from a man who had hit rock bottom, no future or purpose, to a life where he is today. He uses his experience of once being an unemployed man, extreme gaming addict, and weighing 32 stone, wait till you see him, well, you can see him now, to inspire others to make the positive changes in their lives. David is passionate about supporting others to focus on their passions and regain their purpose in life again. He spends his time educating and promoting a healthy lifestyle within the community with testimonials such as, a life-changing experience working with David smashed my goals in half the time we set out to do them in and have been achieving more and more as well as this has given me an opportunity to be honest and explore areas of my life. David was a great listener, had empathy and fully supported my situation. A big thank you, David, for being positive through changing time of my life. So without further delay, hello, David, and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hi, uh, good evening, Ray, and good evening, everyone. Uh, very good, thank you. Been very uh, busy, which is lovely. Um, so yeah, been, it's been it's lovely to be here and see everyone. Obviously, um, I, I know the difference you're making to your audience that you're really helping them connect with with themselves, and, and it's lovely to be here and actually be part of that. Brilliant. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both David and I want you to be part of this conversation. So please do not be shy. So David, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can have a breakthrough to the life that we deserve? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ray. Um, so I, I think probably the best thing to, to do is go back to... So, you obviously all see a man stood here. Um, I often get told that I'm skinny, which is quite humorous. I still find that somewhat funny today. Um, but I wasn't always like that. I was quite a different man. So even if you go back eight, ten years ago, I, as, as Ray was saying, that I was a man who was stuck at home at my parents. Um, 30, I was about 29 at the time. 36 now, but I was unemployed, stuck on the benefits, didn't really want to work, had no work ethic. Spent most of my day, probably about 14 hours a day, playing World of Warcraft, as as is now been recognised actually by WHO, the World Health Organisation, although not Doctor Who, as I was saying away <laughs> earlier, realising that my headset makes me look like a, a Cyberman from Doctor Who, but there's a little bit of a sideline there. But no, um who has finally recognized game addiction as a severe mental health disorder and there's been some backlash about that but actually as someone that's been there so when you look back at my past as those 14 hours a day i would stay up all night play with my gaming um i would get up late in the day i'd go down get my food take it back to the computer sit and play um wouldn't get out of the house very much and i don't i don't hide the fact that i was um very undomesticated. I didn't look after myself, didn't brush my teeth. Sometimes I wouldn't shower. I, I wasn't really comfortable socially getting out. 
because my gaming took over and, and that essentially led to, you know, I was already a relatively big lad, but it led to me blooming to 32 stone, um, which um, I don't have photos here to show, sadly. Um, but obviously, please go through to my social media uh, and website. You'll see plenty of photos of, of the band I used to look like. But um, I, I don't hide from people and I and I talk about it very openly. I've, I've been on... Uh, local and national national tv i was i've been live on national tv talking about my journey and <clears throat> i don't hide the fact that probably at my worst um i was planning to take my own life i really wasn't in a very good place <coughs> excuse me but um i had a bit of a, a breakthrough essentially and this is why it's in many ways why my coaching is called breakthrough life coaching not only that my name's breaker so if i didn't do that i was missing a, i was missing a, a game there wasn't I? Right, yeah but um i i had a bit a huge breakthrough essentially when i uh had a, uh, a very honest conversation with the gp or essentially where the, the gp with me and i went in for a routine um appointment with him and he sat down and he weighed me, he'd done the normal measurements, stuff like that. And he said, he said, Dave, he said, you're 29, 32 stone. According to our records here, you're putting on a stone, maybe two stone a year. He said, I, I, I give you five years, maybe, maybe 10 years if you're lucky. And you're going to be dead of a heart attack. Wow. Yeah. It's really, really blunt about it. And I won't lie, it was, a, it was like a slap. It was a slap to the face of this is where you are going. Um, and certainly when you look at my life then, uh, I wasn't in a, a mentally and emotionally very good place. I didn't really feel that I was someone important. I didn't really feel that I was making a difference to the world. Um, and, you know, I tried uni. I, um, I'd gone to uni and done a, a, a so-called degree in computer programming because apparently, because I like games, I thought I might like that. Yeah, that wasn't. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I didn't go anywhere. I dropped out of that uh, in the end. But again, this is this leads to the bigger picture in the long run of why I do now what I do because I've been at that point where I had no purpose. And one of the really big factors when I had that conversation with the GP was when he originally offered me help. I declined it. I said, "No, I don't want any." Okay. And the reason was because I said I didn't think I was worth it. I didn't deserve it. Do you see the mindset here? This is the person mm. I was. I just didn't – there was help out there. I could get help, but I didn't want to take it. Didn't want it. But actually, luckily, it sounds weird to say, but is the, the fact of it. I'd had – for about two weeks after this appointment with the GP, I'd, I, I kept having the same nightmare over and over. And it was a very simple nightmare where I was walking into a graveyard, walking through, with the, you know, the old cinema trope of, you know, the, the mist and all that. Yeah. Yeah. And I was walking through and, and I found eventually this gravestone. I just walked to it and it was my one. And it said, David Breaker. He was here. He played games. And it, and it just really, it, it really disturbed me and it really hit hard. And bear in mind at the time I was suicidal. I was sort of thinking about taking my life. And and, it, and, it, and luckily in a way that conversation led me to seriously consider, well, actually, you know, this sounds really horrible, but it's the honest fact that I was going to die a nobody. I would have done nothing. I would have just simply had been David and played his games. And obviously I had friends and I had family, people that I loved and cared about. And, and I was the classic chubby, jolly person, if that makes sense, externally. Yeah. Um, a bit of a joker, quite chatty. But actually a lot of people didn't always fully realise, unless they really were quite close, that actually I was really tormented and really wasn't in a very good place. But luckily that conversation with GP happened. It led me to start to question actually what is it I want and where, you know, do I do I want this future where I'm going to essentially die of, of a heart attack at a very young age? Um, I was certainly pre-diabetic uh, or, or pretty much the risk of pre-diabetes. Um, and, and 
at, at such a young age, really, barely thirty. It's 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 very low, uh, very young. But um, luckily, I, I eventually I went back, gave in, and said, "Look, I'll try." Uh, and sadly, again, my mindset wasn't the best. Yeah. Um, so I said, for example, um, I want the quick fix. Is there medication? Um, I took it up. I tried the medication for about six months. Probably not a very good decision. Doesn't really work very well for obvious reasons. Um, but again, luckily, the GP didn't give up on me. He said, look, Dave, as the local services says things. For you. And again, unless you know about the services, it, 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 there's support out there. So within public health, within the NHS and within your local sort of um, council, there's uh, a tier of services for, for health weight issues. So tier one essentially is your GP and your nurse, that, that mm. initial conversation of, yeah, BMI is a bit high. We need to do something about it. Don't get, before people in chat start going, BMI is terrible, Dave. It's the worst thing in the world. <laughs> I know, I know. We all know that BMI is not perfect, but it's probably the best of the worst, if that makes sense. It's the one yeah. thing we've got to kind of... Gives you an indication. Yeah. To, to, but I mean, again, according to BMI, I'm considered overweight at the moment. Okay, so you do have to take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah, but um, so the tier ones, are, the, the, the tier two is what I now I actually for my local council because I'm based in Medway, I actually facilitate the local tier two. I run healthy eating groups for the council. Um, it's like a twelve week program, which was in person, obviously before COVID. Yeah, obviously, but we won't go too far down there. No, because uh, we don't want to have it. <laughs> but um, they're they're looking at moving those online now. And again, it's free. It's free. It's free support for people to to come to a program to get a bit of education. Um, and um, so I went through those, and then the tier three, which is one I went through, which is known as tipping the balance. The tier three, I didn't want to do it first. Again, I declined it. I said I don't deserve it don't want it it's not going to help me blah 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 very poor but i gave in eventually which is a point you know i tried it yeah. the other way i tried it on my own and i just couldn't commit i couldn't i couldn't get my mind in it but i'm so glad i went to tier three because they give you uh initial support with a practitioner they talk you through what you're doing they get you to do a food diary which to be honest now looking from my from doing a food diary numerous times over the years um uh, I now do it with my clients, and it's yeah. worked. Um, I've recently finished a program with a group of five people, and all of them have, in eight weeks, have have lost anywhere between seven to twelve pounds, because because they knew exactly what was there in in yeah. you could record it. Um, but no, going to the tier three had made a huge difference for me. Uh, it led to me starting to understand a little bit my about my choices with my habits um they actually got me counseling group therapy stuff like that to really work through my mindset which made a big difference but mm -hmm. sadly, i lost a bit of weight okay so i lost i went from 32 to 27 uh in about a year but there was this big push of dave you're still pretty big there is another option there's the tier four and i want you to think about it and again the next era is, is gastric surgery which right I said, no, don't want it, don't worth it, it's a wave of magic wand, blah, 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 blah. But again, they continue to work for and talk with me and say, look, Dave, you need to make some changes here. You, you know, yes, you've made some, but we need to keep pushing you. And in the end, I gave in. I said, okay, I'll, I'll go for the surgery. Because again, it's there's a big thing here for me, Ray, around when you look at this, actually, and there's a really good way to sum it up. Right. You need to hammer a nail in the wall. Mm -hmm. What would you rather use? A hammer or your head? Yeah. You'd use a tool, wouldn't you? Yeah. It's definitely. a for a bit. Pardon the pun. It's a bit of a no-brainer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but you do, don't you? And 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 the thing is, the gastric surgery was a tool, and there is a huge negative perception around it that it's you know the easy way out. I've even had people. Um, that, that when I've talked about it, I have had some people go, "Oh, well, you, oh, so you didn't do it proper then?" It's like, well, what is proper? I mean, well, you, 
Well, if you've got a cash around, you can't eat a lot and you're not, you cut down on food anyway. Absolutely. I mean, so, so the types of surgeries, you've got your band, your sleeve, your bypass. I had the most extreme the bypass. And I'll give you a perfect example. They quoted me that I would lose 70% of my excess fat. Okay. In the end, I lost about 105. Wow. I went a bit OTT. Okay. But then I was calorie counting. I used an app called My Fitness Pal. I knew exactly what was coming in, what was out. And because I and because I was like, well, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to, I'm not just going to do it. I am going to do it. And I yeah. am going to make that change to my life. And I won't lie, it's, it was hard, okay? Um, there has been a lot of people with the surgery that haven't had success um, for numerous reasons. There was even a, a lady, before I did the surgery, I did my research, she'd had the gastric bypass, and what she'd done, she'd lost a little bit of weight at the start, but she went back to some of her old habits and she put a load of weight back on and she complained and said that because it was on the NHS and she said it was the NHS's fault and they ruined it for her. She put more weight on before the surgery. But they did some investigations and they actually found she was every – and she caved in eventually, basically, and she admitted that every day she was going to a local Donner kebab shop, buying a large Donner kebab and chips and pita and salad, putting it into the blender – and I'll explain the blender in a minute why. And she was blending it down into liquid and then drinking it. Ugh. So <laughs> that sounds vile. disgusting. Absolutely. Could you imagine all the saturated fat? How, but but how could you drink it? How could you drink it? I know, I know, but she did it. So the, the but the reason for the blender in, okay, and this is again a, a, an understanding, is four weeks after surgery, you need to blender your food because you're basically going back to like a baby your stomach my stomach was literally the size of a walnut it was tiny anything sharp anything hard that's not chewed correctly if it unless it's you know it can cut it can damage it it can stretch it before you know and that's a huge issue for people they stretch their stomach so my stomach's gone back to normal i'm five years post-op now i eat normal food okay yes before people ask <sighs> i eat donuts <laughs> you're a lad um yeah, but, but but this is this is the whole point of what I say to everyone, and and on my courses, on my uh, my coaching and stuff for the council, people often ask me, so so what food can I or can I not eat? Everything, eat whatever you want. They do generally pull faces like that, which is quite funny. Yeah, it's like, it's like, but actually you can. It's about moderation. It's about being aware of what you're having. Um, so 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 sort of. Long story short, essentially, went via the gastric surgery. That was what the support I had. And I went from uh, 27 stone down to about 15 in nine months. So I lost 12 wow. stone. Yeah, I mean, it piled off, uh, which is, which is, but again, this is because I was committed. And this is why I always say to people, it's about being very clear about why you want to lose weight and yeah. um, what's the reasoning behind it. So if you, um, People often, sadly, uh, they, they'll say, oh, I, I want to lose weight because the GP told me or because I'll be healthier, won't I? So like, it's not enough. Like the, 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 the nightmare for me and the, the lack of purpose and the fear of lack of, was the driver for me. Um, so I've been very blunt with people before and said, nope, it's not good enough. Ooh, 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 but uh, sorry, but it's not. It needs there needs to be a really strong drive and purpose behind your choice to make a difference to your life and 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 live a healthier life. And it has to be a choice, absolutely. Because yeah. when you look at a motivational point of point of view. To make a difference to your life and lose weight and actually be healthier, you can't do it with the donkey and the stick. You know, it can't be done with the donkey and the stick way. It can't be done with the donkey and a carrot way. It just doesn't work. It needs to be an internal motivation because external. Yeah. If you're doing it for other people because you think that's what should be should be done, it just doesn't work. Um, so that's that's sort of the weight loss side. That's that's me as a person with the weight. But 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 the the the. Uh, which I know people always go like quite shocked and oh my god, it's a lot of weight. But actually, probably the the biggest change that is not so 
visible because of the physical side is the mindset change the change yeah. the person so bearing in mind that i was a gentleman that, that dropped out of uni um i did used to you know I, there was a time when i used to work um i used to work in um an opticians so i actually used to work in the lab and i knew how to make glasses and stuff and i'd done bar work i'd even been a a uh, doorman for for a, for a local hotel obviously because i was a big guy and it's like well, yeah make dave the doorman he can do <laughs> a bit of a softy though so whenever there was a fight i was a bit like uh, ricky do you want to deal with it because you know i'm not that type of person but but <laughs> but the, the the point is is that, that that actually i really didn't have a work ethic i didn't want to work i was quite happy as i was i i didn't want change and when you look at this mindset around change as human beings we really struggle with it we we yes. become so stuck in our habits so easily but um a big shift for me actually was my group therapy just before surgery because they said you know i was meeting up there was other people that were on the waiting list that wanted to lose weight and we were talking and sharing and stuff and it was really nice and 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 one of them came up to me at one end of one of the sessions halfway through and said, Dave, have you ever thought about becoming a counsellor? You're really you're you're really likable, you're really friendly, you're also a really good listener. It's like No. <laughs> you know, the classic sort of male Why? Ooh, ooh, what's going on there? I mean, I've never yeah, and, and and so again, this is as a person that although I'd Start, I was on my journey. I still hadn't changed a, a huge deal of, of my mindset there. And, but, but, but it laid the seed, and this is the important thing. So about four weeks later, I, I don't know what happened, but I just randomly Googled counselling courses level two. Google it. Google it. I don't know. Maybe there was some sort of external presence there or something to – guide me or you know something because you because it just happened randomly nothing's random well true yes fair point no no that's a fair point everything happens for its reasons and there's always a guide guide yep. somewhere absolutely but um i i looked into it and i and i started my level two in listening skills which is your basic counselling skills. It's part time, a bit hard for me because I hadn't, I didn't wasn't really good at education. Bear in mind, is I'm someone I'm dyslexic. Obviously, this is all undiagnosed. Yeah. Um, but I was undiagnosed dyslexic uh, on the spectrum to a degree. Probably got sensory processing disorder. I don't deal very well with multiple senses of sounds and, and stuff. I, I kind of sometimes have meltdowns. So education was a challenge for me, but I, I gave it a go. And um, uh, hi, Graham, by the way. Sorry, Graham is around. Yeah, um, <laughs> saying he's has to dip in and out. Yeah, that's fine, Graham. We, we'll let you do that. He's probably busy working with clients, bless him, now that I think he's opening up his yes, um, yes, he can see yeah. people in person now. Hey, Ooh, actually, I need to, I, to be fair, I actually do need to talk to Graham because I do need a proper anyway. Sorry. <laughs> As a reminder, see again, that's probably me on the spectrum, and, and the, the you know the ooh ooh, but no. Uh, so basically, um, I started this journey of the, down the council, and I'm really glad I did because um, I, I started the, the listening skills, and it was a hard slog because I had to really start to evaluate yourself because you can't help other people unless you understand yourself a bit. Went on to the level three, so did the counselling theory, started to understand the theory, whether you know, so a good understanding of CBT, psychodynamic transactional analysis stuff like that really a really good understanding of the basics of of counseling theory um and this was quite interesting because this was going i was sort of halfway through my level three as i went for surgery so they actually the people on the course got to see the weight sort of pile off of me if that makes sense um but then again i came i finished my level three uh, and it came to a, a sort of crossroads again for me. As we all know, there's always, we often have moments in our life when there is a, a, a path that we need to look yeah. at and we need to choose. And um, it's not always easy sometimes to make that choice because one path might seem like it's really idyllic, but actually you, you can't always see further down the line, the path, and you might see a path that looks like quite a lot of hard work and it's really 
not very safe or, or challenging but you think oh i don't know but actually you, again you can't so it's one of those things but um i i had the choice to to go on to level four for counseling or to do the level four in life coaching i hadn't really heard much about life coaching then i was, I was, I was relatively unsure about it um, and I knew that the counselling would involve two years. It would involve a lot, more, a lot, a bit more money, and obviously a lot more investment because you have to do something like 250 hours, unpaid, volunteering hours to, to get to get the hours in. Uh, and I discussed it with my partner at the time. And one of the big factors for for me and for the processes of what I was going through was that. Um, counseling as a whole it works for a lot of people and it's helped millions billions of lives and it does um one of my very close friends is a counselor an integrative counselor she's wonderful she, she helps so many people but counseling has tendencies to be very much focused on the now and and the past if that makes sense it's unless you're doing cbt it's not very solution focused yeah um and even then cbt can only go so far and certainly if it's on an nhs there's only so much you can say or be a little bit pushy about yeah whereas life coaching is much more is very different um so i can say quite blunt things to people because i'm trying to actually push them and give them that accountability and actually get them to make the changes um i'll give you a very good perfect example one client i've had once came for me for a business problem uh where he essentially wasn't replying to, to client emails he was a web developer it, it's it's and he and he wanted that result we worked it out why he was doing that gave him some um sort of um ways to manage that and he's and he got past it but there was a couple of again from my base in the counseling and listening skills i could hear the sink wasn't right away from his business and there were certain concerns around his his family life and and his happiness there which to be honest for me is a bigger thing i i, I don't i have worked with people for their businesses but it's not my focus for me it's about their passion their life yeah. their, their happiness and and i actually again and you wouldn't be able to do this in counseling and and he, i think in the halfway through the third session i said to him i said i'm going to ask you a question which may seem quite blunt but i need to ask it who are you without your business? And he just sat there for a couple of minutes and he just, he just sort of looked at me and he just sort of hit him. And then he just sort of, he just kept quiet, quiet for a couple of minutes. And he went to me, I don't know. Mm. And I was like, well, then that's something that you need to work on, isn't it? And we need to start working out who you are. And, it, and he stayed on for three more sessions. And it, again, it wasn't about the business. It was all about him. It was about working out who he was. And luckily, I was quite chuffed. And actually, I know this will hit a tune for Graham. Uh, he had, he'd had struggles with his own mental health. And actually, uh, by the end, he was getting more heavily involved with a male mental health charity. He was developing a website, become a trustee. And he'd found a little bit something separate from his business that he was running yeah. as a web developer to actually what matters to him um so it's as someone that's been there as someone that's been in this position of not not well for like for not having a purpose not being something it's really yeah. important for me to to highlight and share with people that actually it's so important to work out what you do and what you care about graham is a perfect example uh of a man who yes is photography he's a great photographer he loves what he's doing he loves helping people but actually he's got a really strong passion about his past things he's been through which i, I imagine yeah. he shared didn't he uh, on mm -hmm. the show yeah I, 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 and so many people don't okay i am going to say it as it is because it's a bit blunt yeah, say, it, as it is. Is. say it is it is dave most people um they've got it all wrong when they look at life okay um her, there's a guy named uh, robert kurosaki don't know if people have heard of him rich dad poor dad that's his book and when you it's all about the mindset about being an entrepreneur uh and the mindset around money okay and it's, it leads to a bigger question of our society as well so he makes a, an excellent point 
that education is not there to teach people, young people to live a, a f fulfilled, happy life. No. Education is only there for one reason, to make employees. Yep. Okay. Great ants. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because, um, and, I, and, and his points are absolutely spot on. How many of you, if you go back to your school over, I don't know how some of you might be younger, some of you might be older, but do you, how many of you remember being taught finance at school? Well, budgeting? Nope. Taxes? Nope. No, no, no. Nope. That'd be relatively useful, you'd imagine, wouldn't it? That would be very, very useful. Doesn't get taught. Just doesn't get no. taught. So it's led to this as a society where uh, we don't, really work on and focus on the things that really matter um we focus on buying the brand new phone brand new 4k tv and this is a perfect example people will happily sign up for a two-year contract for a brand new phone but they won't spend eight, like eight, like 800 quid 900 pound whatever it is they won't spend it on themselves they won't spend it seeing uh, someone a wellness professional that might be able to help their life it's backwards. I know. I know. Tell, tell, tell me about Please it. You know. <laughs> yeah, but it's true. You know. You know. People go out and they and they spend money on other stuff like their nails, their hair, um, Netflix, Skype, but they won't spend the money on their personal development on themselves. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And 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 it, and, and, and it, there's a huge thing here about uh, about a closed mindset or an open your growth mindset. It's a very commonly used thing. Most people would have heard of it. And I used to have the classic mindset, absolutely. And you can, you know, if you've got a closed mindset by the language you use or the people you surround yourself with. So if you surround yourself with negative people, with negative mindsets, then it's going to seep into you. It's just the way it yeah. is. Absolutely. And the language you'll commonly hear is, I can't do, I'm not good enough, I will never be able to do that. Um, that's a common language used from a from a from a, a closed mindset, and it's trying to shift it and actually say, well, so what if you can't do something? What is a better use of a uh, better language to use to say, I can't do that yet. Um, I find it hard right now, but I could learn how to do it. I could put the energy in to learn how to do that. Yeah, and it the the the, the big thing for me. When you look at what everyone has, when you look at the money that people have, their homes, their family, their friends, their holidays, maybe not so much at the moment, but we'll, hopefully that will come back for people. Yeah, by next year. Yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, really, the one thing you guys have is your health. Is absolutely, and I don't just mean physical health here. No. By no means. It's it's just, there's a bigger picture here about it, and I think sadly for a lot of people, I think it's a, a lack of want, a lack of support to educate, and that's why I do what I do now. That's why I decided to, when I do my weight loss coaching, when I do my coaching programs around the weight loss, I don't. It's not a dieting program. It's not at all. It's and I and. Um, it's all for me is about education because, again, I don't remember at school. I remember doing cooking at school. I mean, I'm 36 now. Yeah, we um, yeah we, we kind of like did, I think, bread and butter pudding we made. Yeah, bread, I remember doing that at school, yeah. Um, but, but you do cooking, don't you? But but do they teach you food labels? No. It's not taught. What's this? It's just not taught. And I don't know if it's changed now. I don't know if schools teach uh, sort of healthy living food options and again it's about having a balance as i was sort of saying earlier you know um i have had some people sort of joke about me and say oh you know you you push it so much day with the healthy eating and you must be perfect all the time with it and and it's like no you have donuts yeah well yeah but we, um uh if people when they see me on my on my on my facebook page and my facebook profile um i i post recipes i share recipes of things that i of that i cook and and i do bake um 
And I think it's important that you do bake. I think it's important that you do have these things. A, bit of a perfect example, the other day we had some bananas that we let blackened up and I made a banana and walnut uh, bread. Nice. Really, but it's really, and again, it's big, but the great thing is here is I know exactly what's in it. I know exactly the ingredients I'm putting in it. And if I have a couple of slices, it's fine. It's not, it's, you know, if I had the whole bread to myself, yeah, maybe a little bit different. You can make chocolate brownies from bananas as well. well there we go. Yeah, mm, See, yes. very healthy. But but there's so many options there, and there's so many ways for you to empower yourself. And it's and it's it to do this. Okay, so from a scientific point of view, okay, to lose weight, to be healthier, it is really as simple as you need to reduce the amount of calories that you're bringing in versus the amount of calories that you burn yeah. technically it's that simple it's not really when you get, actually get down to emotions and habits um, i'll give you a, a good example of one of the clients on my recent program uh lovely gentleman mid-60s very hard worker owns his own business um but he'd got into a huge habit that he wouldn't he used to have sugar in his tea but he stopped having it but he'd have five cups of tea a day, and every single time he had a cup of tea, he'd have two biscuit. or three. Yeah, yeah, biscuit. Made to make up for the sugar. Yeah, two or three milk digestives every day, and they're, they're 86 odd calories a biscuit. So when you think about it, he was easily having practically a whole packet of these a day. And he just didn't even, and he wasn't even aware of it. His habit was so set in place. Um, and, and it does happen. And, and, that's why my first tip for anyone, if you're wanting to, to be a bit healthier, and you'll notice that I try not to use the term lose weight generally. It was quite funny when I started my, my, my weight loss program with my first with my cohort because I said to them, right, my, just so you know, my main aim with you guys is I'm not aiming for you to lose weight. And they were like, oh, what? yeah, well, it's like, but the point is I'm actually, my main aim is to educate you educate you because actually once you educate yourself you can actually make the change yourself so uh, it doesn't work for me just like, slapping you around come on get on with it do this do this because you need to educate yourself so um first tip is to educate yourself absolutely learn about this stuff learn about healthy eating choices learn about um the eat well guide learn about food labeling again i do this for people i try you know i you know i run courses for these people and i actually educate people one-to-one -one because it's a lot to learn and i know what it's been like i know the pain of being that size of being overweight trust me i've been i've been at the point where i've been walking down the street and i've had literally people shouting out cars at me you know who ate all the pies you know yeah. you you i don't know if i should swear but you know the the from austin powers the you uh, uh. yeah um and i've had, i've had all the names and i've been there and it makes you feel like it makes you feel horrible it is absolutely horrible but it happens okay yeah but the simple fact is as a society there are two big things that we need to be mindful of one we live in a society that's the term that, that's used is known as obesogenic it's a big word so I'm quite proud that I got it off without any problems. That's a good. Yeah, but obesogenic means that we live in a society that actively promotes obesity as a reasonable lifestyle. Okay, sounds like I'm judging. Sounds like it's judgmental. That's not the point of it. But the idea is, for example, next time you guys go down the high street, obviously socially distance and all that at the moment. Next time you go down the high street or you walk down a, a busy street, I want you to count how many fast food restaurants or shops there are. Count them. Think about the shops. Think about the food that's sold in shops. Think about the fact that when did you, like, when did you guys last see a buy one, get one free on chocolates, biscuits or sweets? Always. Yeah. When was the last time you saw it on fruit and veg? You don't yeah you see yeah this is why we live in a society which heavily actively promotes obesity as a choice okay and i'm not saying people shouldn't be given that choice because i am a firm believer that people should have the freedom of choice but 
it is a bit one sided at the moment because yeah, it's not fair for people that are trying to live healthier, especially because, for example, a common thing I hear from people, and it is very common, it's too expensive to eat healthy. I can't do it. It's too expensive. Can't do it. Sorry, it's not. It's not. It's just not true. Yes, it is certainly can be more challenging if you're not careful or you don't educate yourself and learn about it. Um, a perfect example, people say, oh, fruit's quite expensive. Well, yes, it can be more expensive. Fruit and veg can be. But actually, then you need to learn a little bit about the fruit. There are certain periods of the year when certain fruit are going to be more expensive because they have to be exported. Learn that. Learn when to buy the certain types of fruit that are you know, uh, at a cheaper point or, or something like that. That's one thing you could do. Another thing, buy it frozen. Don't buy the the uh, the fresh the fresh one, and you're getting caught yep. up in the fresh terminology. Yeah, I I, lo I love frozen or um uh, frozen vegetable uh, frozen fruit. So they must last so much longer. Mm -hmm. And that, and yeah, and frozen vegetables. You know, if you, if you if you if you're single, you know, a whole uh, spinach or whatever. It's like you, I you know, can't. You're gonna go. Yeah, it'll just you won't last, will it? It'll just go no. it'll just more mush. So, yeah. so you're wasting so you're wasting money. So you might as well go for frozen because it's there and you can eat it in the sizes you need. Yeah, absolutely. But again, and again, I've had people go. Oh, well, but I've heard that frozen fruit and veg hasn't got the nutrients or it's got chemicals in it no nope, not at all it's literally frozen as it is there's no extra chemicals in actual fact frozen fruit and veg will have more nutrients generally than fresh stuff because think about that say you've got a punnet of cherries that's been sat in a lorry that's been driven from the depot to to the uh, shops whereas a frozen it's literally frozen it's there bang nutrition's yep. in there to defrost it but again, yeah. what people don't realise, you know, they don't, they don't, you know, there's not this this lack of education. Um, so that's so that's sort of covers my first big tip here is is educate yourself about this stuff. There are people out there. I'm not even talking about coming to me, right? I'm talking about go to the NHS website. Uh, there's a website called Change for Life. Um, there's an app you can get on your phone called Change for Life where you can scan the food and it will quickly tell you how much saturated fat or sugars in it again um as much as i do run a business and i support people uh doing this stuff uh, do you know what i mean it's a passion for me now i want to help people because this stuff is hard right yes so, very hard. so well, we were talking earlier weren't we about uh, fresh soups the sugar they put in them yeah 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 absolutely abs th this is the thing it, it's it's so so and and, and because you don't realize and, and and i've had to learn this stuff um i've had to educate i've done, I've done courses on it i'm in the mid i'm midway through doing uh finishing up a diploma in nutrition and weight loss management so i've i knew the stuff anyway but i'm finishing it up because again it's 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 just trying to educate yourself here so second biggest tip that i would give to people um is be very clear that you understand that if you want to make this change, it's going to be hard work. Okay. So when you look at the mindset of people, when they're trying to make a change, there's actually a, um, there's a theory by Prokaska uh, and Declantine called the cycle of change. And it goes through the processes of the change we go through. So often people start in pre contemplation. So they're in this point where they either a don't know they have a problem, or if they do know their problem, they, they're not ready to change. They don't want to change anything at all. Then the hope is they move to contemplation. They're starting to actually challenge. Actually, do I want to change? Do I need? I might need to change. You know, something's worrying here. And then they go into preparation. They actually start to prepare, think about it. Um, then action. They actually start to enact the changes. Um, but they they have to proactively do it. It's not something they just do sort of second nature. Then you hopefully get into maintenance where you keep it in place, where you're not having to actively do it perfect example is a lady on my program uh, who i now do one to work one to one uh, work with she's lost uh, about eight pounds blood sugar levels gone down she's made a huge difference to her health at the start it was a bit harder and she had to really put a lot of effort in and really sort of think she was counting all of it she was eating she, she had a, a google food diary um, and i was tracking everything what she was eating and challenging her a couple of times you know you've done this what what was the mindset about it 
Uh, but now she's she's just cracking on. She's just doing it. It's part of her day. And that's when you get into that maintenance. Yeah. But interestingly, the most important part of the cycle of change that people don't always think about is this moment when you, it's called, essentially, it's when you fall off the wagon. All right. It's your relapse. Okay. Yeah. And that's when you get people go, well, I've eaten a whole cake now, so I might as well give up the diet because I've eaten a whole cake. Sorry. And then they just drop off. But actually, that that relapse when you make the mistake and you go back to your old habits is a really important time because you need to work out exactly what was going on when you relapsed. Understand the behavior. Well, I'd had a huge argument with my boss. Mm. Okay. All right. And the important thing is you get back into the cycle. You get back into it again. Okay. Because things are going to go wrong. I promise you. Um, I bet you none of you have had a perfect life right you've had a you've had a perfect life nothing go wrong for you ever i've had a practically perfect life no there's been there's yeah if everyone has ups and downs in their life absolutely things go wrong this is the point things always something will happen there's all no one has even and even when you look at as us from a society when we look at our celebrities where we look at these people that are high up in our faces about their perfect lives they don't have but for example perfect example is uh, Dwayne Johnson, mm. uh, The Rock, openly a couple of years ago talked about the fact that he was really severely uh, depressed, really struggling. But he's like, he's got, you know, he's huge. He's a, he's a, a an actor. He's really successful. So people have this perception that that that, that this life of perfect, but it just it, it's unpractical. It just doesn't happen. So that's why it's really important that you evaluate and be mindful of the challenge that will come around change. Change is going to be hard, okay? But the simple fact is you're worth it, okay? Absolutely worth it. Put that time in for yourself, okay? There's one person on this earth for you, each individually. There's one person on this earth which is the most important person. More important than your parents, than your siblings, and even your children. I know this is probably painful for you as parents to hear that you are more important than your children, but you are. You are so important. Put yourself first. Exactly. Make them. Yeah. yeah. So that's the first of my two tips. Uh, the third and final one that um, I will give is is be very be prepared to actually take a food diary and record what you're eating. Know what you're eating. Because if you don't know, it's, it's literally it's literally sometimes if you're trying to eat healthier um, and you're not recording what you're eating, you don't know what you're eating and you're walking down. It's literally like walking down the street with a blindfold on, making a cut of guesses. You don't know where the journey is. You don't know what you're doing. I'm just going to give it a go. It'll be fine. I'll be right. Yeah, I'll unless you walk in the middle of the road. Yeah, yeah, and then get run over, or you walk into a lamppost and look like a. a yeah. <laughs> Done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although, do you know what? Um, I had a friend once who bless. Oh, it would be annoying when I tell this. He, he, I was walking with him, and he were walking down, and he actually walked into the lamppost and deeply apologised. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I said, and then continued walking on and didn't notice, and I'm like. <laughs> Do you know what she's just done? And he went, no, I was, I was a, poor, a poor person. I'm so, so I feel so bad. And I was, oh, it's so funny. So, so funny. But again, again this is the thing. We, we get sort of, we get into this, we, you know, it's so easy for us to get into this momentum, to get into our um, a living a life. And, and I'll give you a perfect example, right? And this is why I do my coaching, because obviously I do my weight loss coaching, but I do my life coaching. I've spoken with so many people and I say, so, you know, sum up your life. How are you happy? What, what do you enjoy? And they go, well, you know, I have my job and it's okay. And I, I wouldn't say I'm unhappy, but I'm not unhappy. I'm not happy, but I'm not unhappy. So I'm just, I'm existing. I'm just getting by. And it's like, yeah. that's horrendous. That's worse than being unhappy. So you don't even, you're, you, okay, you're not unhappy. You're not depressed. You're not. You're not. You're, you're not feeling so low that that, that 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 you know you're having an issue. But but you're not feeling genuinely positive, happy moments. You're not feeling excited. You don't have that passion. That's worse. You're in a trap, but you don't even realise it. 
and so many people get caught up in it they 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 think that they want certain things but actually it's not well i want that I, you know uh, i want a, a perfect career i want you know uh, you know that perfect career gives me a load of money okay what does that mean what's a perfect career yeah. what does money mean would you i want money i want loads of money Matt. Nah. what does it mean and it's I think there's a bigger pitch here that people just don't, as you say, that, that things happen for a reason. There's been numerous things that have happened to me. And, and I've, I've been honest with you about this, Ray, before, that I used to be quite skeptical as a person. I used to be very mm. closed mindset that um, I didn't believe that there was a bigger picture here when you look at the, you know, um, that there's more to our life, the physical realm. But again, I understood it myself much better because I, I took it from a science perspective, scientific perspective. So say, for example, we know we're made of energy. We know that. We we consume energy. We burn energy. We are energy. Okay. But we also scientifically know that energy can't be destroyed. Mm -hmm. We've looked into that with the atom bomb and all the stuff that happened there. So when we pass away, where does our energy go? Can't get destroyed, can it? It changes. Form. We know it can change form. We know energy can change form. We've proven that between solid and liquids and all that and, and, and stuff like that. So where does our energy go when we pass away? That is the question. Yeah. Um, uh, and it does, you know, and, and, and again, um, it makes me, does quite, for, so for example, um, so, okay. I will say my, my dad, bless him, I, I do miss him, I love him. He passed away three years ago. And he always used to say to me, he said, when I go, I said, I'm going to want you buggers. He, he just, just, but, but, but you say, I have felt his presence sometimes. It has been, because um, long story short, essentially, he used to be a baker, mm. uh, a hobby, like it was his thing. But when I was the previous man, I, did, I didn't want to bake. He said, come to me and say, Dave, come with me in the kitchen. I'll teach you how to bake. No, I just want to play my game. Yeah. Not a really good place. But he passed away, sadly. He, he actually died to heavy smoker, COPD, and actually he put on a lot of weight because he used to work in the woods and he was quite physically active, ate a lot of food, but burn it off. Last 15 years of his career, he became a driving instructor. Uh, yeah. And continued to eat the same amount of food. So you can see where this was going, yeah? But um, now, so I've educated myself. I, I, I Everything's home cooked now. I bake. But now I make a point. I bake regularly because it means I can connect with him. Yes. And I have... I have there has been times when I felt his presence, just that slight, yeah, you know. So there is, we know there's more to our world. We do, and I think we, I think people need to connect with it. Exactly. And on that note, I'm now going to ask you a question. But before I do that, if anyone has got any comments or questions they want to ask now is your chance your opportunity to do that and whilst you're thinking about questions you may or may not want to ask david as you know i do guided meditations angel card readings each week so i like to ask my guests whether they would like a guided minute meditation or an angel card so david what would you like me to do for you and those watching i'd like an angel card please excellent that's the perfect answer <laughs> <laughs> And everyone always uh, uh, says the angel cards. So I'll just cleanse and bless them for those that haven't seen me do the cards at all. Now, when I when I do the cards, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time, mm -hmm. which may seem contradictory because obviously I do past life stuff. But when I work with the past, it's to clear the past so that you can be fully present. Mm -hmm. And when I work in the future, it's so you understand to know your future so you can be fully in the present. So everything is for the present. So... What does David and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good for this moment in time? What does David and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good? Which I think is absolutely with the last bit of conversation that we were just having. Protected by angels, you are cherished by the angels. Mm. So 
basically what this is saying to you, David, and to those watching is that you are literally protected, not just by angels, but by spirits, uh, family members that have passed. They're always there protecting and guiding you. And it's just looking out for those signs as you go about, about your daily life, whether it's a song that's played on the radio, a smell you get, that kind of like touch against your face and you know, where, 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 you, where you don't know. So it's kind of like confirming to you, David, that yes, your dad is um, around you and, uh, um, you know, is keeping an eye on you and is really proud of you and what you're doing. Um, and, and that's so it's beautiful that cards actually come actually come out um, for you and for all the those of you watching and that's so oh, thank you. so yeah that's that's absolutely um, uh, brilliant mm. so so everyone I hope that you've um, enjoyed this show and found it insightful and the words of wisdom that David had given you will help you further on your path and your journey so David if people want to connect with you how is the best way for them to do that yeah, so uh, there's numerous social media channels. You've got uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. I'm, I'm quite busy on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Got my website as well, which is, again, it's quite simple. So search uh, Breakthrough Life Coaching. It's all, uh, all one word, breakthroughlifecoaching.life. You'll find it. Um, you can see I'm, 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 I'm normally around quite a bit. So, you know, if you search David Break or you search Breakthrough Life Coaching, you'll 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 find out about me. You'll, you'll you'll find a connection with me. And again, if you honestly, guys, if you have any questions, if you're not sure, if you want a bit of guidance, then please um, contact me. I'm happy to help. I've got blogs on my website which covers things. Um, I've got one there that covers the five starting tips of weight loss. Um, so there's the the point is, and and I think this is an important thing to lead for every to end for people in many ways is is. When you look at my journey, the man I used to be with the weight loss and the mindset change and the, and the growth and now, you know, as a person that runs multiple businesses and supports people, I run a wellness network, I do multiple things. I didn't do it on my own is a point here. I did it with support. There are people around me that support me. Graham, for example, is one of the people that supports me. Now, I've got a large network of people that support me and vastly I support them. It's an it's a it's it's about two way. yeah it's a two way absolutely. So the point is connect with those people. And again it leads to the angel card about the angel protecting. Connect with those, connect with it because they're gonna be there to help you. If you're trying to do this on your own Whatever it is, whether it is a weight loss journey, whether it is trying to take charge of your destiny, trying to do, you know, get to the life you want, doing it on your own, you're giving yourself a handicap. Get help. There are people around you that can help. And that's a phone going off. Yeah. It's brilliant. Not my, to be fair, it's not my phone. That's <laughs> Oh, that, that's okay. So thank you very much, David, um, for your insights. It's been absolutely um, wonderful. And I hope that people, you've, you've taken some some tips um, and hints from that. And I will put all of um, David's details um, in the comments so that you can just click on the links to go straight to all the various pages. And of course, if you've reached that crossroads in your life and you need help finding your destiny and getting clear on your path, then I'd love to be that guide for you reach out and connect with me and we can arrange a free 20 to 30 minute session via Skype or Messenger so that we can find out more about each other and how I can help you on your journey. And of course, with the lockdown easing, if you're looking at a chance of getting away and learning more about yourself, then I'll be running a four day retreat down in Glastonbury in October. So please feel free to check it out and register your interest. And of course, I've got the Angel Wings membership community, which is open where you can get the chance to grow our, um, with Ascended Masters, Angels and Oracle cards to spread your wings and soar to becoming um, the best person that you can be. And of course, if you sign up to my uh, free weekly newsletter, you get a guided relaxation and several other free gifts. So thank you everyone for watching. And I would like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people um, that feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you. And of course, I look forward to you joining me again next week, um, where my guest will be Wendy Fry. And before we go, Graham says, 
Well done, guys. Thank you, Graham, for dipping in and out and uh, commenting. And he said he's going to watch the, the replay later. Uh, great. Great that, guy, bless him. He's a great guy. Really, really great guy. He is. He's absolutely brilliant. And of course, yeah, if you watch the replay, you can still um, uh, make comments, ask questions, as both Dave and I will be dipping in and out. Um, so everyone, thank you so much for watching again. Thank you, David, for being on the show. It's been absolutely brilliant. Thank you. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.